almost underway from College Park. Ramsey working out of the windup, kicks and fires, and we are underway from Bob Turtle Smith Stadium with a first pitch ball. Bartles hitting 253 on the season, no home runs, six RBIs on the campaign. Went 0 for 4 yesterday as Penn State struggled at the plate, and he pops this one up in the air. Shallow center field going back is the shortstop Shaw, but it will be the center fielder Aline calling for it, and there's one gone here in the top half of the first. Nice quick first out from Ramsey, and he likes getting those quick outs as well. A few punch outs in there as well. He's yet to go an outing less than six innings. It's nice to give the bullpen a little bit of a rest. Here you see the defensive alignment for Maryland, same as yesterday with Ramsey, of course, the change on the bump. Luke Schligger back behind the plate. Day game after a night game for him behind the dish once again. First pitch to Johnny Piacentino is in there for strike number one. Now going back to Schliger yesterday, three hits and two runs scored played a big part in that offensive onslaught and the later goings of last night's game. You'll notice that both of the catchers for Maryland and Penn State, we talked about Matt Wood earlier on as well, two of the more dynamic players. Matt Wood was fantastic on both sides of the ball yesterday, several key stops with a runner at third to keep Penn State in the ball game. Way out in front of something off speed, Piacentino that time, ball in two strikes now to the junior from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. You see his numbers there, eight RBIs on the season, went one for four with a run scored yesterday. And the one-two offering is fouled back to the screen. Excellent crowd on hand here at the Bob, as that's known well, as Penn State, an old rival, is back in town once again. First time in five years that they've been here at Bob Turtle Smith Stadium. Two teams met up last year in State College. Another one, two, cut on and missed as Piacentino went chasing after one out of the zone. That's the first strikeout of the day for Ryan Ramsey. Coming off two double digit strikeout performances in three outings, and he just loves to mix that fastball and off speed. Has Piacentino way out in front for strikeout number one of hopefully many on the day. So you think back to that 2017 matchup, the last time Maryland and Penn State linked up here. Terps took all three games, so it's four straight against the Nittany Lions in this ballpark over the span of a long period of time. You know, hop in the time machine to that point in time. A 15-2 Maryland win the last time these two teams linked up before yesterday. Some old names some Maryland fans will be familiar with. Marty Costas went four for six with five RBIs. His younger brother is at first base today. And Maxwell Costas as it's now one and one to Matt Wood. A.J. Lee went four for four with five RBIs as well. And speaking of good numbers, Matt Wood has been so fantastic to start this season. 382 average, had an RBI yesterday to make it 20 on the season. But he pops this one up to shallow left center field. Matt Shaw calling for it. This time he makes the catch, and the side is retired. One, two, three through the top third of the order for Ryan Ramsey. A we lot in the righty batter's box against the lefty throwing Tulio as we get set for the bottom of the first inning, and Luke Schliger takes the first pitch up high for ball one. Three for five, two runs scored yesterday. Excellent day behind the plate. Only had to catch two different pitchers as well, so most of the Maryland bullpen is available, and he launches this one into right center field, moving over as Gerlot not gonna get there as it one hops the wall. On his way to second base is Luke Schliger, head first dive, and a leadoff double for Maryland's catcher. Chris Aline had, you could argue, the biggest hit of the day yesterday, a three-run homer to turn a one-run game into a four-run game in the eighth inning. He takes the first pitch low and outside for ball one. It was his only hit of the day, but in what was a tense back and forth game, you knew Penn State likely had one more gasp in them in the ninth inning, and they rallied in the ninth, but Maryland could be a little bit more comfortable protecting a four-run lead as opposed to the one-run advantage. It was back and forth for much of the day. Maryland led yesterday's contest three to one after four. Penn State came back to tie it in the sixth. And then took the lead in the top half of the seventh, making it four to three. Maryland scored five unanswered in the seventh and eighth to come away with the win. There you see Al Leeds numbers, the eighth home run of the season coming yesterday. 25 RBIs for the captains of this Maryland team with the leaders on and off the field. And just to think from going from hitting below 100 his freshman year, now to wearing that iconic, in the Maryland program, the iconic number three just shows how much he has worked and how hard he has risen all the way up the ranks in this Maryland side to come back for a fifth season and potentially snub a few MLB signings and contracts. Shows how much he loves this program. 
unfinished business for Aline after he was injured in the first at bat of the Greenville Regional last year. They hit by pitch that was up near his head. And he pops this one up in the air, right field line, it's gonna get out of play. And over towards the road, just barely missing a silver sedan. Such it is as you drive around Bob Turtle Smith Stadium, gotta keep your head up at all times. So two balls, two strikes as Maryland looks to strike first here in the bottom half of the first inning. Schliger with excellent speed, 10 stolen bases on the season, that leads the team. Unusual for a catcher to do so, but that's been the kind of player Schliger has been all year. 2-2 to Ali. Bounce back up the middle, it's gonna get through into center field for a base hit. Al, uh, Schliger rather stumbles, he's gonna come home and score anyway, and Ali with an RBI single, Maryland strikes first. But Maryland jumps in front regardless. First pitch to Nick LaRusso is in there for a strike, nothing and one. Unusual stat line yesterday for the transfer from Villanova, one for one with four walks. But any way you can get on base for Nick LaRusso, and he's done so every single game he's suited up for Maryland, all 26 of them. I don't think Rob Vaughn could have really asked for any more with the replacement. And hits that one on the button right to the shortstop. It's gonna be a double play. Perry with a fantastic heads up play to get the runner at first, Aline, who had no chance at all as he was going on contact and it was hit right on the button to the shortstop, who was easily able to double up Aline. Sometimes you hit him right on the button and a player's there. Matt Shaw pops one up to the right side. He gets into foul ground. Josh Spiegel moving over and he's gonna run out of real estate. And sometimes for Nick LaRusso, you have to just go back to the dugout. Matt Swope, a hidden coach, will have come on over and said to him, you know, you hit the ball hard. And sometimes that's just how it happens. You hit it at somebody, but Maryland will be very happy with the swing that LaRusso took. So take a look at how Penn State lines up defensively. Shaw swings and misses at that one, nothing and two. I'm liking the aggressiveness early in the count so far from these Terps. Schliger took the second pitch, I believe, out to right center, and Shaw swinging at the first two here as well. Bubba Aline worked a good count, but LaRusso, Shaw, and Schliger all going early in the count. One and two now, and if you had to pick one player in the top part of the order, you'd expect to swing at the first pitch. It would probably be Chris Aline, mm -hmm. known to be aggressive when given the opportunity, but took a couple of balls that missed outside and then was able to work the RBI single. One, two to Shaw. Cranked down the left field line, hooking and it will get foul. Was always hooking that direction and just bounced to the left of the left field line. So we'll do it all over again. Loud, not even a strike as the count remains one and two. Matt Shaw hitting 262 on the season, 24 RBIs. Player that Rob Vaughn has called one of the best players on this Maryland team, and the sky is truly the limit for this sophomore. Another one, two. Taken for strike number three, and Kellen Tulio is able to bounce back after the RBI single scores one, but the RBI single from Aline did enough to give Maryland the one nothing lead. We're through one, Terps on top in College Park on Big Ten Plus. of DC. First pitch to Josh Spiegel way out in front of something off speed out of the hand of Ryan Ramsey and it's nothing in one. There has been a lot of buzz around this Maryland program and it's really started to notice around campus around this building. It's Maryland ranked number 23 in the nation by the USA Today poll. Nothing in two after a fastball to Spiegel follows up the off speed. Ryan Ramsey showing he can throw any pitch in just about any situation and that's one of the big assets to this lefty being able to pitch backwards when necessary. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Fastball on the outside corner that Spiegel just watched all the way into the glove of Luke Schliger. Second punch out of the day for Ramsey. And there's one gone here in the second. Ramsey just knows when to throw what in what situation, just second to none, and paints the black on that outside corner. Don't think 
Spiegel was really looking for a fastball in that situation. Not sure many would have, but that's the, spe the beauty of Ryan Ramsey. He likes to mix it up and likes to make it a bit unorthodox. Jay Harry comes up empty on a first pitch fastball, nothing and one. Harry, a sophomore from a touch in New Jersey. Went two for four yesterday to extend his hit streak to six games. And he fouls that one back up and over the screen, nothing and two. And it's been important and a lot of success so far, Michael, for Ryan Ramsey to pitch ahead and get ahead of batters. First pitch strike, second pitch strike has been really important so far. And it's been reflected as we've seen in his past few starts. He's had 12 and 13 strikeout games. He gets ahead in the count early, and he does not like to fall behind. He likes to get these batters out quick. And he's, it's represented by getting into 90, 100 pitch counts by the sixth and the seventh inning, and then turning it over to the bullpen as opposed to the fourth or the fifth. Nothing in two, and that time Harry able to lay off the fastball up high. Season high in innings is seven. Season high in strikeouts is the 13 back in early March against Cornell. And he was absolutely dazzling. One two offering to Harry. <laughs> Foul tipped into the glove of Schliger. Second straight strikeout for Ryan Ramsey. Give him three on the day. Just makes him look so silly. Completely buckled him with just that sweeping movement on his off speed. Just so much fun to watch. Take a look at how behind he is. Had no clue it was coming. So here's Billy Gerlot sliding down into the number six spot in the lineup after he led off yesterday for the Nittany Lions. Went 0 for 4, but did register a sacrifice fly in the seventh that at the time gave the Nittany Lions the lead. And there's another first pitch strike. All three at-bats in this inning. First pitch strikes for Ryan Ramsey. Working quickly already delivering the 0-1 and quickly nothing in two again. And that's how you know Ramsey's in for a day. He's got that pace to him. That's what makes it makes watching this team and this pitcher specifically exciting. And he just works quick, quick, quick. Here comes another. Nothing in two. Did he go around? He did not. That's a ball and two strikes. Good hold up there from Gerlot, riding a 256 batting average, nine RBIs on the season. Ramsey already into his windup. Kicks and fires the one, two, swung on and missed. Out in front of the curveball, and Ramsey strikes out the side. Steps up, dunks a nice off-speed pitch in. But Costas leading this team, ten home runs, second in the in the in the in the entire NCAA. I beg your pardon, with ten home runs, just having become second all-time in Maryland program history as well. Continuing to climb up the rankings, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, his brother Marty was a legend in his own right here in Maryland colors. And Maxwell continuing on the Costas legacy, pretty darn nicely, I should say. 0-2 off it. Line in the air to center field. Moving over and back is Piacentino. He's going to track it down, and there's one away. That will send Troy Schreffler to the plate with his 13-game on base streak. I'll give you something interesting here after this pitch, Ben. It's bounced out towards the second baseman, Cooper, and there's quickly two gone. Two games in the last 10 where they haven't had four-plus hits, so this middle back of the order is becoming a real important part to support Schlager and Aline and LaRusso up top. And we'll see if Tulio is able to neutralize this part of the order and give his team a chance to get back into this ball game. Smarslack pops it up. It's going to get out of play and above the crowd. Bobby Smarslack hit a baseball that left Bob Turtle Smith Stadium immediately yesterday. The left and center fielders each took about a step towards the wall and then just watched it sail up and over. A majestic shot at the time. This is now two and one. That came earlier on in the ball game yesterday. It's back in inning number four to give Maryland a three to one lead. At the time, it seemed like the Terps were on cruise control, but Penn State came back, tied up the ball game, took the lead in the seventh before the Terps scored the five streak to win the ball game. Two and two now, as Tulio looking for a one, two, three inning of his own to answer Ryan Ramsey striking out the side in the top half of the frame. Two, two, missed it outside, three balls and two strikes. When we come back in the top half of the third inning, we'll have a special guest on the broadcast. Billy Owens, the grandson of a Maryland legend, will join the show. A lot more on that coming up in the top half of the third. 
3-2, foul back to the screen. Should be fantastic to have that conversation as Maryland continues to nurse the one nothing advantage. One run on two hits so far for the Terps. Nothing doing offensively for Penn State at the moment. Big deep breath from Kellen Tulio. Brings home the payoff pitch. In there at the knees, strike number three. And Marslack is down on strike. Second straight inning that Tulio ends the inning with a punch out. We head to the third. Maryland up 1-0 on Big Ten Plus. We'll have Billy back in just a second as Ryan Ramsey returns to the hill. As Ben Kaler, Anthony Steele, and Tyson Cooper do up for the Nittany Lions. First pitch is a strike. As Ryan Ramsey continuing to work quickly with Ben Kaler, the 0-1 offering runs downstairs, ball and a strike. Kaler hitting 219 on the season. As the 1-1 offering, big swing and a miss, ball and two strikes. Ramsey kicks and fires the one, two. It's laced back up the middle into center field for a base hit. And there goes the Ryan Ramsey no hitter as the first base runner reaches for Penn State here in the top half of the third. Good piece of hitting for Kaler. Second knock of the weekend for him. See what one for two with a run scored yesterday. Here's the DH Anthony Steele hitting 256 on the season. One home run, four RBIs as well. Lefty versus lefty battle here in the top half of the third inning as the Nittany Lions look to get right back into the swing of things. First pitch is in there for a strike, nothing and one. Tyson Cooper awaiting on deck as you see. With Kaler at first base, nobody out here in the top half of the third inning. As they check back on the runner, Kaler, he's back in safely. We should have Billy back now. Billy, we were talking earlier about the first pitch that you were able to throw before the game. Just talk a little bit about that experience, uh, being able to throw out that first pitch here at this ballpark. Let me wait till after the pitch. You can go ahead and answer now, Billy. All right, there was a good pitch there, and it was actually a, a Field of Dreams experience. <laughs> My. Uh, Teammate Joe Curley, Shipley Field of Dreams, actually. <laughs> and um, I haven't been back here for quite a long time, and the field's amazing. Yeah, certainly, I'm sure, a wonderful feeling to be back here. It's a gorgeous day, really packed. Bob Terrell Smith Stadium as well. You know, Maryland's starting to get a little bit more recognition from around the rest of the country as well, going to the NCAA tournament last season. They're ranked this season. What does it mean to you and your family to have the kind of national recognition back around the Maryland program? Awesome. A um, lot of family roots here. And I actually played Legion ball here. And for them to be uh, playing like they're playing is fantastic. I, they got a great coach. I had a little chat with him. I love to see the prayer there in the outfield. And um, I hope they keep up the, the great work they're doing. It's the, my, most of my family's here today, and it's just been a, a really a blessed day, and it is a beautiful day. Thank you. The Lord, we don't have the wind you had yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was swirling yesterday. It was chilly. It was not exactly what you think of when you think of April weather. As Maryland's going to get the lead runner there on the bunt in the lineup card. We'll flip back around. There's two away. We got to see your numbers from back in the 1970s when you played here at this program. What are some of your favorite memories from playing as a Terp? Well, I, I said I played Legion ball here, and then to get to come here and play with a good friend, Dickie Can, who introduced me to my wife. I actually played Legion ball with his dad here, uh, Richard Can. They ran Marlowe Sports, and then Frank Thomas played second here with me, and Gary Bishop's here today. 
I just have tremendous memories of, uh, you know, some great outings here and great teammates. So uh, the field, like I say, has is, is changed a little bit with this AstroTurf and uh, Bob Turtle Smith Field, but I'm, I'm hoping they put back at Shipley Field under there because a couple people came up to me today and said, oh, I remember it is Shipley Field. But uh, it's all good. As they check back on the runner of first base, he's back in safely. Ryan Ramsey's having a heck of a day so far on the hill for Maryland. One of the more impressive pitchers that Maryland's seen in quite some time. And how important is it to you know, have those kind of electric pitchers, electric ball players back here in College Park uh, rep representing the Maryland program like you did? Well, it, it's amazing to have a good starting staff, and he, he looks tremendous. Um, I haven't been able to follow them too much, except I know they're winning a lot of games and they got three of the best starting pitchers in the conference, maybe even in the country. So it'll be fun to watch and see how far they go. They, they, he, he looks tremendous on the mound. Maryland, of course, won yesterday. Some things stay the same. Your grandfather, H. Burton Shipley, went 3-0 against Penn State all time, going back into the record books. Great rivalry all time between Maryland and Penn State, obviously a lot's changed though. You know, watching college baseball now, what are some of the main things that strike you different from you know, the time that you played? Uh, it looks, they're throwing a little more heat than I used to see, <laughs> it looks like. Uh, the talent is tremendous. Um, got to catch a foul ball there. So that, it's just amazing that they're doing well and the facilities and the support they're getting from Bob Turtle Smith, and then uh, Gary was saying he's done some work here, and then Under Armour, of course, and uh, it's really fun to see what, what they're doing here and how the program, look at the stands, just chock full. So, another fastball for a strike. Got some good, good pitchers. And just before, uh if Ryan Ramsey's able to get out of this inning, talked about the stands, a lot of young kids as well, a lot of little league teams here today. What does it mean to have kind of the next generation here about, uh, in, in College Park watching the Terps? It, that's amazing, the programs that the kids get to enjoy and then bringing them onto the field, that's a tremendous experience for them. Hopefully a great memory for those kids as well. This could be the final out of the third as Shaw throws on to first base in time and the side is retired. Billy Owens, thanks so much for joining us, sir. Thank really you appreciate so much. it. Thanks for you guys and the work you do. We head to the bottom half of the third okay, inning. So Maryland one run contest and Penn State did threaten in the top half of the third inning as Sean Lane fouls one back to the screen. Nothing and one. That was pitch number 25 for Kellen Tulio, so he's been fairly efficient so far. And he's really settled in after back to back hits gave Maryland the lead to start off their offensive set in the bottom half of the first. Lane pops this one in the air. Shallow right field, foul territory, long run for Spiegel. Not the first time today he's ventured over there and again runs out of room. And it's interesting, as you mentioned, Tulio's first inning. Seems to be a point of a little bit of concern for quite a few pitchers through all the ranks. Just getting out of the first inning, unthawing themselves a little bit. He's worked really well through the second and he hopes to work through a strong third as well. But a good, good bounce back second inning from him after the after the two hits from Schlegger and Aline. 0-2 offering to Lane, fouled back and he stays alive. Last outing for Tulio, as I mentioned, was in the midweek through one inning of scoreless baseball. Didn't give up a hit or a walk, struck out one in what ended up being a 3-2 walk-off win in 10 against St. Bonaventure. Now Penn State looking to even up the series this weekend against Maryland after the Terps took last night's contest 8-4. Lane behind nothing in two. Nice take on a curveball that dipped low down by his knees. Maryland's try, trying to stay undefeated here at home this year. They're 11 and 0 to start 2022 at home. Remarkable record so far. So important to make your home a fortress. That one clipped Lane, and he's gonna be on his way down to first base. First base runner since the first inning. With 12 RBIs for today's second baseman. He fouls one back to the screen. Riding a nine game hit streak as well. Back at the second base position today. Nothing changing in the Maryland one through nine order. And Rob Vaughn taking the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. 
It was a good crowd on hand yesterday, just a tad over 1,000 in attendance, 1,029, and at least from the eye test, certainly looks like even more today. A one offering to Keister, catches the outside corner, nothing in two. Home plate umpire today is Matt Nieder, Mike Victor over at first base, Anthony Dudonez at second, Jeff Doy, the third base umpire in this four-man crew. With Julio ahead, nothing in two on the number nine hitter, Keister. Maryland will flip the lineup card around after this at bat. They check back on the runner lane, back in with plenty of time. The DH yet to attempt a stolen base so far this season. We'll have only two Terps in the, make it three Terps in the starting nine that have not done so, along with LaRusso and Costas. 0-2 offering to Keister. Swung on and missed. And the third punch out of the day for Kellen Tulio. In either half of an inning. First pitch to the catcher here, misses low and outside. Another nice play from Wood to keep the runner off over at first base. He put on a master class defensively yesterday. And now catching the lefty throwing Tulio as opposed to the righty, who started yesterday's game for Penn State. 1 0 is in there, it's a ball and a strike. It was a Jaden Henline start yesterday. And now Tulio starting today, the junior from Emmaus, Pennsylvania. It's a Pennsylvania heavy lineup for the Nittany Lions. They recruit in their home state very well. 25 of the 40 players on the roster from the state of Pennsylvania. So one one just misses outside, two balls and a strike. It's a fairly young team as well, 23 underclassmen on this Penn State team as Rob Cooper starts to retool this Nittany Lion ball club. But a lot to be excited about as a Nittany Lion fan with the young talent on this team. Schlinger fouls it back, two balls and two strikes. Matt Wood, who we've been talking about all weekend long, really, just a junior. Jay Harry, just a sophomore. C.J. Bataro, a player who transferred in from Vanderbilt, and you know the program that they have. He's not in the game today, but certainly with plenty of talent himself. Anthony Steele, the D.H., just a freshman. So a lot of young talent on this Penn State team. Wouldn't be too surprised if it's not too long before we hear from them towards the top of the Big Ten standings as the 2-2 is laced into the screen. And then you look in the pitching staff, Jaden Henline, just a sophomore as well. Tommy Molsky, who's gotten... Saturday starts before, he's just a freshman. Travis Lundsman is a sophomore who's gotten some Friday night starts as well. So best is certainly ahead for this Nittany Lion program and Rob Cooper building something in State College. Now into his ninth season, retooling for the Nittany Lions. Big deep breath from Tulio. And brings home the 2-2. That's bounced to home plate, nice stop again from Wood. They've got Schlinger shaded up the middle a little bit. Shorts, shortstop Jay Harry, really pretty close to the second base side, of course, in case a steal attempt comes. Last year, Penn State finished 18 and 24 in that conference only season. Last year, still affected by the pandemic. They were ninth in the conference. And a 3-2 just misses outside. Excellent at bat worked by Luke Schlinger. And there's two on and one out here for the heart of the Maryland order. Conference, I mean, as they'll look to go 2-0 and today, they were 20-5 and coming into yesterday's game. It's really where they've gotten their strength and their ranking from. Really going to be a formidable opponent for everybody in the Big Ten are these Terrapins. Only conference team ranked at the moment as the first pitch alley runs outside 1-0. and Technically, Maryland did face a conference foe earlier in the season as they played Michigan at the Keith LeClaire Classic in Greenville, North Carolina as we're going to get a mound visit here from the pitching coach, Josh Newman. That does not count as a conference game, though, in the record. It was really more or less just happened to be a Big Ten team that was also invited to Greenville, North Carolina. That's why he came Michigan. back to be an anchor of this program, rewarded with that number three. 
awarding the showing of the three pillars of this Maryland of this Maryland program. He drove in Schliger in the first. The three pillars of Maryland baseball that they echo around the clubhouse: ownership, toughness, and a growth mindset. And Aline has certainly shown all three of them in his time in College Park. And the count now, 2-0. and oh. Three balls and no strikes here, and Tulio certainly does not want to lose Aline with LaRusso awaiting on deck. And that had to be the topic of the mound meeting, how to be going about Aline and how to be going about LaRusso if worst comes to worst. Doesn't get any easier with Shaw and Costas behind them. 3-0, green light was on, and he fouls it back to the screen. Interesting call to give the green light on the 3-0 with, with a runner in scoring position. Probably would have been strike one as well. Could have been the thinking from Aline. But to get the bases loaded for Nick LaRusso, who hit the ball hard in the first, it's an interesting call. That's that trust in one of your captains mm -hmm. to make sure that you only swing at a pitch you know you can drive. And Aline did not miss it by much. It's Lane at second, Schliger at first. And 3-1 offering from Tulio. Taken low below the knees, ball four, and the bases are full of Terps here in the third. And all the control issues for Tulio. Two walks on four pitches and a hit by pitch that have loaded the bases. First pitch to LaRusso. Finds enough of the zone on the outside part of the plate. Nothing in one. That's a big first strike for Tulio to give himself some confidence after walking two straight back. especially a lean on five pitches. Tulio would love a ground ball here to perhaps turn two and get the Nittany Lions out of the inning unscathed. A one to LaRusso. Missed it well outside. And it moves to a ball and a strike. Not much wind to speak of at the moment. What little there is is blowing out towards left field, but not a major factor at the moment on a sunny, sunny day in College Park. And Maryland looking to give a good crowd something to cheer about here. 1-1 one, one fouled off of Wood. And it's one and two, and a strikeout here for Tulio would really give himself a lot more options. It would eliminate the productive out opportunity, and it would give him the chance to attack Shaw on deck with a little bit more aggressiveness. The outfield Sherp giving it the productive out approach. Left field and center field playing very, very deep for Penn State. No doubles defense at the moment for the Nittany Lions outfield. Happy to trade the out for the run. 1-2 is laced into center field. Coming in is Piacentino. It's going to drop in front of him for a base hit. Coming home is Lane. He's going to score. RBI single for Nick LaRusso. And the Terps double their lead. Shaw at the plate. First pitch to the Maryland shortstop. Plenty of velocity in a first pitch strike. Statement of intent that he really wants to come back with some heat, and he's remembering that Rutgers start. Really, really wants to get back on track to where he usually is because before that, he's been pretty rock solid. Hadn't let up a run in three in three appearances before that. 0-1 to Shaw, laced into right field, moving over is Gerlot. He's going to have plenty of room. He makes the catch, tagging is Schliger. The throw is going to be cut off at second base. Sacrifice fly for Matt Shaw. Three nothing Terps. Two away now for Maxwell Costas. Uh, takes a strike on the outside part of the plate. Checked his swing, but was a strike anyways. Costas flied out to Piacentino out in center field last time up. He has Aline at third, LaRusso at first, and the 0-1 offering runs up and in. See Costas' numbers still hitting above 300, 27 RBIs, and the long ball has been cooking for Costas all season long. 1-1 one, one offering. And he was swinging for number 11 there. But he came up empty and it's one and two. Now we'll certainly have to change his approach with the two strikes and the two outs. Troy Schreffler awaiting on deck should the inning continue. 1-2 for Miller. Bounce to the right side, that's Cooper. He'll take the short route to second base, step on it, and the side is Retired. Maryland, though, pushes two more runs across. They lead 3-0 as we're through three on Big Ten Plus. We're going to give a 
balk to Ramsey as the home play umpire motioned the count to be 1-0 upstairs to the press box. Not entirely sure what the decision was there. Home plate umpire ushering 2-0 now as it's bounced to the first base side. It's going to be a fair ball, and Costas will step on home plate regardless, so no harm, no foul, but not something you see all that often, Michael. But regardless, Ramsey able to get the first out of the top half of the fourth inning, and Josh Spiegel will step up to the plate next, was the first of the three straight strikeouts in the second. Spiegel, the first baseman, who's now 0 for 4 with an RBI on the weekend combined yesterday and today. And he bounces this one out to the right side as well. Keister has to move over to his left, gets it out of his glove quickly. And very quickly, two gone with a pair of ground balls to the right side. So Ryan Ramsey continuing to work quickly and work well. And keeping Jay that, Harry will step up next. Keeping the pace to his game as well. But he likes, as we said earlier, getting these quick outs up ahead in the count, forcing the players to swing at decent pitches that he puts in. He's been working this, the fastballs and the off-speed really, really well today as, as well. And there's a first pitch strike to Harry, looking to extend his six-game hitting streak, the sophomore from New Jersey. A 268 a season ago for the Nittany Lions. And went four for 11 with three RBIs in the series last year in State College against the Terps. Spent the summer with the Fond du Lac Doc Spiders in the Northwoods League up in Wisconsin. Hit 303 for them. And he takes the 1 1 in the outside corner, 1 and 2. Good spot from Ramsey. Harry also looking to extend a five game hit streak into six. 1 2 offering from Ramsey. Big swing and a miss as the ball goes into the dirt. Schlinger has to throw down to first base to complete the strikeout. He does so. It's the sixth of the day for Ryan Ramsey, and he is through four dazzling innings in College Park. Hey, in the suburbs of D.C. as the first pitch runs downstairs to Troy Schreffler, and it's a ball and no strikes. Stephen Miller back out there on the hill in relief after a Kellen Tulio start. Tulio goes two and a third innings as Schreffler Fouls this one away down the right field line. Gerlot, long chase. He's going to run out of room. And it just barely misses a car once again for the second time down that right field line. Ball and a strike now to Schreffler, who's 0 for 1 today with that ground out back in the second inning. That 1 2 3 frame for Tulio, where it looked like he was starting to roll, then exits after two and a third, three earned runs, three hits, two walks, and three strikeouts. A hit by pitch as well and a double to lead off the game for Luke Schligger. Only the one extra base hit conceded by Tulio, but the three runs and two and a thirds had Rob Cooper seeing enough. Schreffler behind in the count now though, ball in two strikes with Bobby Zmarslak and Sean Lane getting set to go here in the fourth inning. This guy moves to two and two. For Penn State after they're done with this weekend, they'll have a midweek contest against Bucknell, then they hit the road again for three at Northwestern next weekend. 2-2 two -two count coming up from Miller. It's hit into shallow right field up and over the head of Cooper for a base hit. First knock of the day for Troy Schreffler. And Maryland has the leadoff runner aboard. Gorgeous campus, but uh, this time of year, if the weather isn't necessarily cooperating, isn't the most pleasant of occasions. But for Penn State, they'll look to win a series up in Evanston. They still can win this series this weekend if they come back in this one and take tomorrow's contest as well. Terps can clinch the series win with a victory today. Lane bounces one out towards the shortstop. Harry will take it himself to second, throws back across his body in time. Make that Smarslack who grounds into the 6-3 double play. West Virginia, then three at home against Purdue. First pitch is a strike to Lane, the designated hitter. For Maryland, of course, they'll have the game tomorrow. Then a midweek, two midweeks, in fact, this week, Tuesday against George Mason at home. Just beat the Patriots on the road last week, the Terps did, and then Wednesday 
They'll take on an in-state rival in Navy before hitting the road for their next conference series at Minnesota, speaking of Colt. I was just going to say, Evanston for one and Minneapolis for another. And how so about Stephen Miller able to face the minimum here in the fourth inning as he gets Lane to strike out swinging. We're through four innings for his fifth inning of work. Four innings of scoreless baseball so far for him. Only two hits conceded to Penn State and a first pitch that misses outside to Billy Gerlot. A ball and no strike. Six strikeouts, no walks. And just the two base runners. Both coming in a third. First pitch to, oh, the 1-0 rather to Gerlot is a swing and a miss and it's one and one. Very efficient as well, 43 pitches for Ryan Ramsey as he starts the fifth inning. So a chance to go pretty deep into this ball game if he can keep this pace up. We're used Maryland to only use the, go for it, Michael. We're used to seeing him go at least six innings, but with, at this rate, we could see him go even deeper, seven or maybe even eight. It's a fly ball that should be playable for Chris Allen out in center field. He is under it, and he makes the catch. And there's one away. Season long and innings pitched with seven. He's done that twice. Maryland only used the one arm out of the bullpen yesterday and Noam Rotek who went three innings. You'd have to imagine he's not available today, but everyone else would be ready to go out of the Maryland pen. But certainly no reason to take Ryan Ramsey out or even think about it at this stage, the way that he is rolling. First pitch to Ben Kaler downstairs. Ball and no strikes. Kaler had a single back up the middle in the third inning. Was the first base runner of the day for Penn State. Moving his batting average up to 235. He takes the 1-0 upstairs, two balls and no strikes. Spent the summer with the Winnipesaukee Muskrats in the New England Collegiate Baseball League last year. Kaler did. Struggled in the early stages of the season there. He takes a fastball at the letters, counts two and one. Over at third base today, as he was yesterday. Can also play middle infield for the Nittany Lions. And he swings through the 2-1, and Ramsey's back in the count, 2-2. Two and two. Ramsey working quickly as soon as he gets the baseball. He's back on the rubber, wanting to go. And he brings home the 2-2, two -two and Kaler has to duck out of the way of it, and the count's full. Three, two offering, swung on and missed. Fastball at the letters, and Kaler came up empty. Strikeout number seven for Ryan Ramsey. Really good stuff to be mixed in that location. The pitch before, he kept it up, up at the letters and he did it again. You would have thought that maybe on a fastball after that, he's gonna try and go back down with the off-speed stuff, but he stays with the high cheese because he knows, he's confident that he can just blow it by these Penn State hitters. Really good work. First pitch to steal is rope to the right side, past the diving Kevin Keister into right field for a base hit. Anthony Steele is aboard for the first time today and the Penn State half of the fifth inning continues. If you were watching the last at bat for Kaler and thinking it was unusual for Ramsey to be in a three ball count in this ball game, you'd be correct. That was his first three ball count of the game and it came with one out in the fifth inning. Showing the command that Ryan Ramsey has had. He has conceded the three hits though. Scattered across a couple of different innings and Tyson Cooper, the number nine hitter, the son of head coach Rob Cooper will step up to the plate. Pokes the first pitch out to the right side. Keister is there this time. Throws on to first base to beat Cooper by two steps. We are halfway through this one in College Park and Ryan Ramsey rolling along. And Stephen Miller back out on the hill in the dark blue of Penn State. First pitch to Kevin Keister is in there, 0-1. Miller's acquitted himself well since coming in to relieve Kellen Tulio. As Keister launches one down the right field line, it's hooking, it's hooking, and it's foul. And Miller perhaps gets away with one. These Terps keep staying up in these, in these early counts, getting good hacks, and it isn't even like they're putting in bad swings necessarily. All good swings, even some good contact. And Keister drives one down the left field line for a base hit, it'll roll towards the corner. Keister with a big turnaround first, he's on his way to second, and he's going to get there with a slide in towards second base. Lead off double here in the fifth inning for Kevin Keister and make it a 10 game hit streak.
Something of a wraparound man, Kevin Keister is as the corners of the infield pinch in. And the first pitch misses well outside out of the hand of Stephen Miller. Penn State, something of a family school for Miller. Father John went there, older sister Bridget currently there as well. And Stephen trying to help the Nittany Lions baseball team back into this ball game. Has to work around the leadoff double though. 1-0 below the knees, it's 2-0. Going back to Keister, seeing him get on and then see the top of the order for these, not just the Nittany Lions pitchers, but for every pitcher going forward that the Terps have to face is going to be such a nightmare because they can all just get on base, on base, on base, whether it be walks, hits, whatever, however you like. Keister getting on spells could spell only trouble. Let's see if the green light's up here for... Schliger ahead in the count, 3-0. You know, he would love to get a baseball he could drive or at the very least pull to the right side. They got Keister to third with less than two outs. Chris Aline on deck, Nick LaRusso to follow. And the 3-0 offering from Miller. Taken outside, ball four, and runners at first and second. Nobody out for the Terps here in the fifth. That was with one out. This is with nobody out. And he flips to the lefty batter's box with the righty throwing Miller on the hill. Squares to bunt, pops it up, and it will drop in foul territory. Aline took the words out of my mouth before I could say him. I was going to say you could expect a bunt, especially with his speed, taking runners on first and second, pushing them over to get a productive out after him. But he just couldn't quite keep it in fair territory. But that's smart from Aline and from the dugout giving him those signs. Wood's going to go have a conversation with Miller now to discuss how to attack Aline should he continue to attempt to lay one down. And we'll see where Kaler plays as well at third. It's interesting for Kaler whether or not he crashes on a potential bunt. There also is the chance for a force out at his base at third. Shortstop Harry playing a double play depth so he wouldn't be able to wheel around and cover. Aline does square to bunt, pulls back, takes a strike on the inside corner that Aline didn't like, but now with nothing in two, you'd imagine Aline will swing away. And they call Bubba in the clubhouse. Trying to tack on some more runs for Maryland, give them some more insurance as we kick off the back half of this ball game. Nothing in two, swung on and missed. Important strikeout for Steven Miller here to get the first out of the fifth. Here's Nick LaRusso, single his last time up. And he takes a strike here. There's an RBI single to score one back in the third inning. As Maryland moves station to station with the bases loaded. If Miller is able to escape this jam without conceding a run, that would shift a lot of momentum back the way of the visitors. Now LaRusso is behind, nothing in two. And his first at bat, he hit a sharp line drive straight to Jay at short, and then in his second, he got another hard hit ball up the middle for his first RBI of the day. So LaRusso making some good contact on the day. Miller once again ahead in the count though. So he's battled back well after the double on the walk. 0-2 offering. Just missed outside, difficult pitch to take with two strikes, but LaRusso stays alive. But the way that Ryan Ramsey's throwing on the other side, a three nothing game feels more like an eight or nine <laughs> nothing game. So runs at a premium at the moment and Penn State would love to put a zero on the board here in the bottom of the fifth inning for Maryland. One two delivery for Miller. Nice stop from Wood once again and it's two and two. Haven't seen a pitch get by Wood just yet. You mentioned earlier he put on a show yesterday and he's had hasn't had as much to deal with but when he's been called into action He's one of the most reliable in the entire conference. Yeah, if you're a catcher, a young catcher, trying to learn the position, trying to learn the game, just watch Matt Wood and he'll do a lot of things right. He'll check back on the runner at second, Keister. He's back in safely. Really, you could just clip the entirety of the game yesterday where Maryland was at the plate. You can learn a lot from Wood. And today, he's been excellent as well. Luke Schliger catches a pretty good game himself behind the dish for Maryland. Miller turns his attention back to Nick LaRusso. Two and two with one out here in the fifth. Taking it up high, and LaRusso's got himself back in the count. It is full. Matt Shaw waiting on deck, had a sacrifice fly last time up. He certainly would not want to load the bases for him. 
We'll see if LaRusso gets one he can drive. Payoff pitch. Poked out towards the second baseman who bobbles it. And this could be trouble regardless for Maryland as they're going to throw it on to third. And Keister is going to be tagged out. So despite the drop from Cooper, a double play as Penn State gets out of the inning with an odd play to end the fifth. But the last out in the fifth inning. He was the one who started off that play to end the fifth inning defensively as Penn State was able to turn a double play to get out of that jam. And we were talking off the air, Michael, wouldn't be too surprised if Cooper intentionally dropped that ball after knocking it down, knowing he had the chance to get not just the one out, but two. Especially with the knowledge that it was a line drive. Of course, infield fly with runners on first and second has to be called on a routinely playable or catchable ball. And it looked like the way he swiped at it, once he had the ball in his hand, suggests that he may have dropped it on purpose. Coach's son with a coach's mind. And it really helped Penn State get a little bit of momentum back and put the zero on the board. And Cole, Bart Cole Bartles is able to follow it up by driving one into the right center field gap that goes all the way to the wall and a leadoff double for Cole Bartles to start off the sixth inning and the momentum turning the way of the visitors. Also helps that he is the leadoff hitter of the order with the lineup turning over for the third time. Really nice work by Bartels to get ahead and swing early in the count. We haven't really seen them attack. It wasn't even the best pitch, but he just stuck out and got that bat head out as far as he could have and just drove it. Imagine what, it, what he could have done if that's on, the, that's on the barrel square on. Fourth knock of the day for Penn State. Maryland only has five, but they've parlayed that into three runs. Penn State still looking to plate a Nittany line for the first time today. Here's Johnny Piacentino. Lefty versus righty matchup here in the first pitch to Piacentino is cranked into left field. Back goes Marslak to the track, to the wall, it's gone. And all of a sudden, it's a one-run ball game in College Park. Johnny Piacentino with his first home run of the season, and the lead is three to two. Game on at Bob Turtle Smith Stadium. And now it's got you thinking, did that double play really give them the momentum? It seems as if they did. It was a it was a potential for a momentum swing. And just look at that. There had to be a bit of a discussion as if to say, all right, boys, let's get it turned on this inning and let's make this a game. Make it a game. Piacentino did. Ball that just backed up a little bit to catch enough of the zone. And the center fielder offered at it and delivered it over and beyond the scoreboard out in left field for a very important, impactful two-run shot. And echoing yesterday when it seemed like Maryland was cruising along, and Penn State came right back to take the lead, it seemed like the Terps' three-run lead. We talked about in the inning or two previous that the lead seemed much larger, and then two swings, the double and the home run, and all of a sudden the Nittany Lions back within one. Well, now this is where we're going to see Ryan Ramsey and if he can really get his wings. He's going to be working now under a lot tougher conditions. Now a one-run game, giving up two extra base hits in a row. So let's see how Ramsey works this inning. It's going to be important to see where he goes from now. He's got nobody out. Boy, he's got nobody out now. So it's almost as if he can reset mentally a little bit after giving up those two runs. Ball looks like it might have gone behind the hitter, Matt Wood. And Ryan Ramsey facing some adversity for really the first time today. Maryland hasn't scored since the third inning, and the most recent offense comes from the visitors as Wood lines one over the head of Keister and into right field. Three straight hits for the Nittany Lions. And the visitors' bats really waking up as they go through the order for the third time today. Still no movement from the dugout, this would be a wise time to just kind of break up the momentum a little bit. Maybe they'll give it one more to see how Ramsey works. Looks to be a little bit of movement going on. I couldn't see who it was, but a few bodies moving around in the bullpen. Maybe time to get Ramsey up and out of there sooner or later, depending on how he works through this inning. Yeah, it's a tough spot for Rob Vaughn to be in at the moment because you know what Ramsey is capable of doing. It's only the sixth inning. He's only at 60 pitches. And this would certainly be very early on in that pitch count to get Ramsey out of the ball game. But Penn State does seem more wise to his stuff this time around through the order. 
as Josh Spiegel swings through the first pitch strike. Yeah, third time of the order is usually the killer for any team, any pitcher. But we'll see how Vaughn and how Ramsey deals with it this time. It's been three straight hits, but he's got confidence in showing that there isn't a mound meeting just yet. Does Vaughn of his pitcher. That one's bounced to home plate. Spiegel able to lay off, and it's one and one. Pitching coach for Maryland's Mike Morrison in his first season with the Terps. Someone who played at Coastal Carolina and won that national championship for the Chanticleers in 2016. Someone with great experience knowing how to win coming to the Maryland staff. So they check back on Wood plenty of time. And as you mentioned, even though it is an early in the pitch count to be thinking about removing Ramsey, you'd rather get him out of there and hand it over to the bullpen than let him surrender another run to tie this game. So as you said, very tough spot for Vaughn. 1-1 one, one offering here. Another big swing and a miss, and a strikeout here would certainly give a lot of confidence back to the lefty. Now into his junior season, the New Jersey native. Even just that one pitch, the sweeping motion that barely makes it back to the plate, looks a little bit more like himself. So maybe he's calmed down, but we'll see. Big deep breath from the lefty. 1-2 offering. Hit in the air, center field. Back goes Marslak. This one will be more playable for Maryland's left fielder. And there's one away in the sixth. Ryan Ramsey is used to going deep into outings. You look at the last five outings of the six for him. 105 pitches, 103 pitches, 95, 96, 100. This is not a pitcher who's used to getting pulled after 60 or 70 pitches. Certainly having to dig deep into another gear to work his way through this sixth frame. Here's Jay Harry, who struck out twice today. He's two for six on the weekend. First pitch lefty versus lefty. Fooled him with an off-speed pitch, first pitch. Such a nasty slider, and we see the curveball and the slider mixing. It goes 12 to six on the curveball, but that slider, especially from lefties, just disappears away from those lefty hitters. Billy Gerlot awaiting on deck as once again a check on Matt Wood, who can run fairly well for a catcher. Infield back at double play depth. Shaw and Keister the combination at short and second, respectively. And it's hit out towards Keister, who knocks it down. Flips to second base for one. Shaw turns it. A 4-6-3 double play is just what the doctor ordered for Ryan Ramsey as he gets out of the sixth inning. But a two-run homer for Johnny. Piacentino makes this a one-run ball game. Don't go anywhere on Big Ten Plus. Three and two-thirds against the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee back on the 19th of March. As Shaw fouls the first one, and it's nothing at one. Over one day for Matt Shaw so far. Did have a sacrifice fly that came back in the third. And he bounces this one to the left side. Kaler is up with it. Strong throw across the diamond to first base to beat Shaw by two steps. Open up some more opportunities for Rob Cooper tomorrow. Maxwell Costas pops one in the air. This is higher than it is deep out towards right field. And Gerlot's able to make the catch fighting the sun to gone. Doing as come tomorrow. Savakul on the bump still. No projected starter for Penn State for tomorrow's series conclusion. Should be a fantastic contest. Both of these games so far between Maryland and Penn State have been really good ball games. So you want to tune in for tomorrow's game. Still a lot to attend to today though, and Steven Miller having his say as he strikes out Troy Schreffler. One, two, three, go the Terps in the sixth. We're well moving on to the seventh. Six hits, one run game. make this a one run ball game. First, first pitch to Billy Gerlot is bounced to home plate. Ball and no strikes to today's right fielder. It was 0 for 2 with one of those seven strikeouts and a fly out to Bubba Aline. Righty versus lefty matchup here as Ramsey delivers and finds enough of the strike zone to make it 1-1. One one. He's been very efficient so far today, Ryan Ramsey has. We've been tracking the pitch count all day and right on target for where you want to be. And Ramsey where he wants to be in this count as he makes it 1-2 and two on Gerlach. Ben Kaler, Anthony Steele, 
do up to follow. And we'll see if that is, in fact, who Rob Cooper sends to the plate. Ramsey looking for a bounce back inning here in the seventh. Durla hits it off of his fists into shallow right field, and Keister tracks it down. One gone here in the seventh. So Ben Kaler will step up to the plate next good day for him so far today. One for two. Had that leadoff single back in the third inning to get the first hit of the ball game, first base runner of the ball game for Penn State. It's the first time that the Nittany Lions had threatened. They couldn't score in that third inning, but two in the sixth off of a two-run homer for Johnny Piacentino is all the offense for the Nittany Lions at the moment. Maryland had one in the first, two more in the third, and they haven't scored since. 0-1 offering to Kaler downstairs. In fact, the Nittany Lions are out hitting the Terps right now 6-5. No errors for either team at the moment after the Terps had four yesterday, including three on one play in the second, or two plays in the same inning in the second inning to allow a Nittany Lion run to score without a hit or a walk. Terps have had a few ducks on the pond, three, four walks today as well, hit by pitch and Schliger as well as Shaw, I believe, if I'm correct. Nope, not correct. Schliger and, and Bubba Aline both get in on the pond as well. So as you've said in the past few innings, doesn't matter how you're getting on base for Rob Vaughn's team if you are getting on base. Maxwell Costas giving chase here. He's going to have room. He's going to make the catch. Kaler is retired, and there's two gone. Some more weak contact for Ryan Ramsey here in the seventh inning with a pair of pop-outs as Ramsey will turn his attention to Anthony Steele and a chance for his first 1-2-3 inning since the fourth. Nine pitches so far to get through the first two in the order. And here's the DH Steele, one for two today. Swings the first pitch, bounces out towards Keister, has to charge it, flips over to first base. Costas is able to dig it out, and it's a 1-2-3 frame for Ryan Ramsey, 6-7-8 in the order. Time to stretch here in College Park. Maryland leads by one on Big Ten Plus. Today, Miller has come in and shut the door in relief. Rest of us were ready to go. Home plate umpire not quite ready yet, so Bobby Zmarslak will step back out. 7-8-9 due up for Maryland here in the bottom half of the seventh inning, and the first pitch to the man they call Bobby Z is in there, it's nothing in one. Smars like 0 for 2 today, only the one hit on the weekend, but I don't think it's quite landed yet. A tank towards left center field for a home run back in the fourth inning yesterday. Here he grounds out to the shortstop, and there's one gone in the bottom half of the seventh. First pitch to Martin here is taken for a ball down low. Martin 3 for 14 in a Maryland jersey, one RBI, that came against Siena back on the 19th of March. And hits this ball back up the middle and into center field for a base hit. It's got to be a good feeling for Martin. Got to be a good feeling for Rob Vaughn as well, pushing the right buttons to get Maryland a base runner here in the seventh inning. really, really nicely. Check back on the runner, Martin, back in with plenty of time. Zach Martin, a part of this new crop of freshmen and underclassmen that have really impressed in the opportunities they've been given by Rob Vaughn. Kevin Keister trying to drive in an insurance run here in the seventh inning. Maryland has significantly less breathing room than they did the last time Keister was up at the plate in the fifth. It was a three nothing game at that time. Two in the sixth inning has made it three to two. A one offering from Miller. That backed up really nicely on Keister. And Miller's ahead, nothing in two quickly. Haven't seen too much of the backup in the last inning or two from Miller, but that's a nice, confident pitch to dunk it in and quickly get ahead 0-2 in the count. It's got that arm side run from the righty. I went down below the knees of Keister. A ball and two strikes. Keister making a case to be the everyday second baseman, the sophomore from Delaware. And he takes that one upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. Ten game hit streak. It's an 11 of his last 12 as well. Batting average that started the season now below 200, now well over 300 
Sitting at 351 at the moment, in fact. 2-2, two -two, swung on and missed in the dirt, but first base is occupied, so. We were just speaking off air that it's a bit of an interesting decision to remove him. It makes sense to be going after Schliger as he just did. And a heck of a web gem from Spiegel to snag that ground ball from Schliger. It was hit hard, but he's able to knock it down and step on first base, and Penn State is out of the seventh. To the eighth inning we go very quickly. to begin the eighth. Both teams with six hits at the moment, but Maryland with just the one run more. That first pitch fastball that pops the glove of Luke Schliger, but missed outside for a ball. Yeah, Cooper made that play in the bottom of the fifth to kind of spur the momentum into the top of the sixth for the Penn State offense. He creatively dropped, or probably dropped the ball on purpose that would have been caught and turned it into a double play. Two and zero count now as they rule he did not go around. And the 2-0 offering from Ramsey, no doubt about this one, it's 3-0. There's some light activity in the Maryland bullpen, nobody up and throwing with any sort of urgency, but you get the sense it's more in case things unravel for Ramsey. 3-1 now. I was gonna say that it's gonna be interesting to see how Vaughn goes about this inning with Piacentino due up. It was the last time the lineup turned over, it was Bartels and Piacentino Goodness me, that's a mouthful. Piacentino, who the top two hitters in the order who got those extra base hits. So he's worked back into the count here against Cooper. We'll see what happens after this at bat. Payoff pitch to Cooper is laced out towards right field. It's hooking foul. It's going to get fouling out of play, and we'll do it all over again. And then, of course, after Piacentino is Matt Wood, who's as dangerous of a hitter as it gets in this Penn State order. Maryland would love to get the chance to face him with nobody on in the ninth. 3-2, runs upstairs. And a really nice at-bat worked by Tyson Cooper. And there's one on here with nobody out in the eighth. So that is the lineup card flipping around. Pennsylvania freshman coming in to run for Cooper. So here is Bartles, two for three so far today. And you wonder if he'll square around to get seized to second with only the one out. Looks like he was swinging away there, but takes the first pitch outside, 1-0. and Double play combination of Sean Keister would love a ground ball here from Bartles. And you wonder how much Ramsey will attack the bottom part of the strike zone, prioritizing that ground ball. Pitch count now into the 80s that we've been keeping an eye out all day. one -oh. Fastball right down the pipe. And it's even up at a ball and a strike. Single and a double for Bartles. After an 0 for 4 day yesterday, he's come around and turned the corner here in the middle of the three game set. 1-1 one -one offering. Check swing foul ball. And Ramsey's ahead 1-2. and two. For Rob Vaughn, you'd love to get Ramsey through the eighth. And then you can bring out one of your high leverage guys for the ninth, perhaps Sean Hine, who has seen time getting the 27th out before. With Cease leading off a of first, a one-two offering to Bartles. And first they do check back on Cease. He's back in with plenty of time standing up. Should Ramsey record an out here in the eighth inning, would mark his longest outing of the season. He's gotten seven twice. Now into seven plus territory at the moment. One, two to Bartles. Hit it pretty squarely, but well foul. And we'll do it again. Cease with a good secondary lead over at first base. Being brought in to run the bases and then he'll play defense in the bottom half of the eighth inning and Penn State hopes for the bottom of the ninth should it be necessary. See if Ramsey goes back to the fastball here or something off speed. And the count now one and two. Big deep breath and brings it home. It's poked out towards the shortstop. Shaw, he's only gonna have one play. It's at first base. It's made and there's one gone. Advancing up to second base, though, is Derek Cease. He's in scoring position 
with one out here in the top half of the eighth inning. And Nick LaRusso on the left side of the Maryland infield looking over to see what the plan of action he is here to face Johnny Piacentino. There's Sean Hine getting up in the Maryland pen, getting set to go should he be called on here in the eighth or perhaps in the ninth. First pitch to Piacentino, big swing and a miss, nothing and one. It was the home run back in the sixth inning that completely changed the complexion of this ball game. Turned a three nothing game to a three two game and it's been on a knife's edge ever since. A one offering. Another healthy cut and he came up empty, nothing and two as we take another look at that big swing back in the sixth inning. He knew it as soon as the ball left his bat. Carrying out beyond the left field wall, up and over the scoreboard out in left field. And that's one of the impact plays in this ball game. Piacentino looking for another one here in the eighth, but he's behind nothing and two. Ramsey brings it home. Swung on and missed. Big strikeout here in the eighth inning, and there's two gone. And now is uh, the matchup of the ball game at the moment. This is best on best. Ryan Ramsey and Matt Wood with a runner in scoring position and two outs in a one-run ball game. Just to go back to the Piacentino at bat, he just worked him outside, 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 just having the slight bend away on the change. Really, really good work. He worked away from him, and Piacentino had to have been aware, but great work from Ramsey to get him swinging all three times. We'll get a mound visit here. Where the game could be won or lost with a runner in scoring position and Wood at the dish. At bat of the ball game. Lefty versus lefty, best on best with two outs and a runner in scoring position. One run game, it's hit to left center field. It gets down for a base hit. This ball game is tied as Cease comes all the way around and scores. Matt Wood delivers for the Nittany Lions here in the eighth. And I think that's a statement hit because he went after the first pitch. He saw what Ramsey did with Piacentino and he said, I'm, that's not gonna happen to me. He attacked it right away, got the bad head out and he just laced it right over short and into the seven and a half gap out in left center. Taking the ball the other way, knowing exactly what he needed to do. And this ball game is back to square one and fired up is Matt Wood right in front of his own dugout on the first baseline as Penn State's come storming back to score three unanswered in the back half of this ball game to level things up at three. First pitch to Josh Spiegel, well outside. A ball and no strikes. And it's been the third and fourth times through the order that Penn State's had all the success. You look at Matt Woods' day as a perfect example of that. First two times up in the first and fourth, pop out, ground out. Next two times, a pair of singles and none more impactful than the most recent. One and one now to Spiegel, who's 0 for 3 today. And now the onus shifts back to the Maryland offense to be able to respond. They haven't scored since the third inning. And how large does that play in the fifth inning loom as well? With Cooper with a heads up play to get the double play instead of just the one out. The Maryland had runners at first and second and one away. Two balls and a strike now to the first baseman, Spiegel. Curveball that dips low and inside, three and one. There's two righties getting loose in the Penn State bullpen down the right field line. You can see there in the background beyond the runner at first, Matt Wood. As Ramsey turns his attention back to Spiegel. Three balls and a strike. It's hammered down the third base line. Well foul. It's three and two, and that'll give Wood a head start from first with the two away. Well, we've talked about how good the crowd has been. They've been into it, and they've been treated to one fantastic game of Big Ten baseball. With at least one more chapter still to be written. Payoff pitch from Ramsey. Missed it outside, and there's two on and two outs with Jay Harry do up next. Another lefty against perhaps Ramsey. And we'll see if it is in fact Ramsey that gets the chance to face him. A 
At the moment, it looks like it is. Going to be a pinch runner here for Penn State as Brendan Franks is gonna come on in and pinch run for Josh Spiegel. So the cleanup hitter's day is done. As Franks is now the trail runner. Franks is an infielder. State College, Pennsylvania native, so we'll see if he slides into Spiegel's first base position in the bottom half of the inning. Ramsey versus Jay Harry, who was 0 for 3 today, including a double play his last time up. That, of course, not a concern with the two outs as Ramsey misses low and outside. And a couple of dozen home plate umpires behind the screen, and not necessarily a fan. Billy Gerlot awaiting on deck as Penn State looks for another crooked inning and to take the lead for the first time today. 1-0 offering. Right down the pipe, one and one. Not much of a shift on against the lefty hitting Harry. Outfield playing him straight away. You can see Shaw there in the foreground in his normal shortstop position. One one. Hitting the air to right field, sending Schreffler back towards the track. He's got just enough room to make the catch before slamming into the wall. Jay Harry gave it a ride, but Troy Schreffler tracked it down. Penn State gets one run though on the RBI from Matt Wood. We're back to square one to the bottom of the eighth inning. Great ball game on Big Ten Plus. Spiegel out of the game. Remember back in the top half of the inning, it was Brendan Franks who pinch ran for Josh Spiegel. So Spiegel out of the game, Kelly to left, and left fielder Bartles to first. 1-0 offering here to Bubba Ali, runs downstairs and inside, 2-0 to Maryland center fielder. You saw Lundsman's number, 6.18 ERA in his 27 and two thirds innings, hard throwing righty. Let's foul the way, two balls and a strike. And Lundsman has, has been given one heck of a call to be facing Aline LaRusso and Shaw. And if one gets on, he'll probably have to face the hard hitting Max Costas too. That might be a, an at bat like Ramsey versus Wood. Hard throwing versus hard hitting. 2 1 runs inside, three balls and a strike. And Altoona, Pennsylvania native who started off his college career at South Carolina, Lundsman did. Only pitched two and a third innings for the Gamecocks and decided to come back home. Big swing and a miss, and the count's full. Of course, big news for South Carolina to advance to the Women's Basketball National Championship game. Big win over Louisville yesterday. Payoff pitch coming here between Lundsman and Aline to start off the eighth inning, and the home plate umpire seen enough and called time. Three, two. Cranked in the air to right center field. Piacentino moving over, he slides, he makes the catch. Johnny Piacentino had a beat on it all the way. 1-0 count coming up to Nick LaRusso. Upstairs, 2-0. You've seen these Terps hitters become a lot more selective, not going after it in the early going anymore because they know how important getting on and choosing the correct pitch is. Russo right on that one, fouling it back to the screen. Two balls and a strike. Uh, you've been following along all weekend. You've been treated to a pair of excellent games of baseball yesterday. Maryland with a three-run homer in the eighth inning. To turn a one-run game into a four-run game. It was very close for much of the contest, though. And, of course, this one has been close as well. Tied at three here in the bottom of the eighth. And Lundsman dealing at the moment. And all three of LaRusso's at bats, he's hit the, the ball on the screws. Until this one, when Lundsman just absolutely freezes him. Shaw's 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. First pitch to him here is in there, nothing in one. Wind now blowing out to left field. Another healthy cut from Shaw, and again he comes up empty. Lundsman wants to work quickly too. He's waiting on Shaw. 
And a quick pitch with an 0-2 count coming up, missed it. Badly outside, and Shaw did not chase. Shaw, somebody who MLB prospects, or MLB scouts rather, have an eye on as a perhaps prospect after next year. Lundsman as well will catch the eyes of some. One, two, just missed it. Wood held it for an extra beat. Trying to get that call, didn't get it. Yeah, big that's, that Shaw stays alive here, as I said, with the hard hit and Costas on deck. They just want to get this done and out of here as soon as possible. Six, seven, eight, due up for Penn State in the ninth. Two, two, upstairs. And an excellent at bat from Matt Shaw to work the count full. Big deep breath from Lundsman. 3 2 offering. Up and out of the zone. And a base runner from Maryland here in the eighth. Really good work from Shaw to battle back from being down in the count to extend this inning. And now the big bopper, Max Costas, comes up. Another one of these high leverage, high impact at bats late in ball games. Tie game with a runner on and two outs in the eighth. And Maxwell Costas with his 10 home runs and 27 RBIs, who's 0 for 3 today, stepping up to the plate. <laughs> Healthy cut at the first pitch, and he came up empty, nothing and one. Shaw can really run over at first. Good speed and runs the base as well, too. 0-1 offering. Another big swing and again a miss. And Costas behind, nothing and two quickly. And a lot of options now for Lundsman to go with here. Penn State pen is empty. This is certainly Lundsman's eighth. And you have to imagine we might see Sean Hine come out for the, uh, for the ninth inning, rather, for Maryland. Runners on the move. 0-2 misses outside. Throw goes down to second base. Tag not in time. That walk becoming even bigger. And now this at bat becoming even bigger. Two strikes. And now it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a runner at second base in Shaw. Outfield still playing fairly deep with the exception of the right fielder, Gerlot. There's a couple of steps in. Anything that gets on the ground in the outfield could score the speedy Shaw. 2-2. Bounce to the third base side. It's going to be a tough play for Kaler. He can't make it, and Shaw stays put. Infield hit for Maxwell Costas and runners at the corners. The pitcher is Travis Lundsman. The batter is Troy Schreffler. And the first pitch comes in. It's hit to the right side. It is just foul. I think Bartles had it covered. Should it have squeaked fair? The count moves to 0 1. Bobby Zmarslak in the background awaiting on deck. There's Shaw from third. 0 1. Off of his fists and out of play. Nothing in two as Lundsman quickly gets ahead. It's clear that Treffler wants to be the hero. He's taken the hacks. He's seen the pitches that he wants. And now it's just about seeing if he can read the correct pitch from Lundsman and whether or not to, he can force Lundsman into a mistake. And Lundsman will step off and regroup. Righty versus righty. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning, Maryland threatening and looking for their first run since the third. Third sign is a go for Lundsman. 0-2. Oh, On the outside corner, strike three. Big pitch for Travis Lundsman to get himself out of the eighth. We head to the ninth inning. Nothing separating the Nittany Lions and Terps on Big Ten Plus. Ben Kaler and Anthony Steele to follow as the first pitch is fouled off of Gerlot, and it's nothing in one. He's been used in the high leverage situations all season long, Sean ha has. Really only the one bad outing to inflate his ERA. That came against Michigan 
where he gave up three earned runs in one inning down in Greenville, North Carolina, back in early March. 0-1, oh, just missed. Schliger wanted it, didn't get it. Crowd wanted it too. This crowd has stuck it out and has been treated to one heck of a ball game. 1-1 one, one catches the zone, 1-2. and two. Nobody getting loose in the Penn State pen down the right field line. So you have to imagine Lundsman will come out for the bottom of the ninth inning. Maryland will have the bottom third of the order. This girl lot fouls it away and remains one and two. At bottom third is Marslack, Zach Martin, and Kevin Keister. With Luke Schliger if the inning should continue in the bottom half of the frame. One, two. Staying alive is Gerlot. A nice play from Rob Vaughn as well in the dugout. If need be, this game could go a little bit longer. Sean Hine, he has worked his pitch count up, especially for a relief pitcher. So they may use him for another inning after this one if he can keep his pitch count down. Well, one way to keep your pitch count down is to throw pitches like that at the knees for strike number three. And there's one gone here in the top half of the ninth. Here's Kaler, one for three on the day, had that single back in the third inning. Only time he's gotten on base today. Eight innings for Ryan Ramsey and the longest outing of the season innings wise for him. First pitch backs up for a strike for Kaler. Three earned runs, seven hits, two walks, eight strikeouts. And he will leave and enter with a no decision in the books. 0-1's a fastball, that's good for a strike, nothing in two. And since we were talking about Ramsey and his pitch count all day long, he ends with exactly 168 strikes to 32 balls. 0-2 to Kaler. Just missed it. Maybe a little low, maybe a little outside. And it's 1-2 and two to the third baseman. Such a tough pitch to lay off, but good plate discipline from Kaler to extend his at-bat off that off speed. 1-2, just about the same spot. Again, didn't get it. Again, the crowd wanted it. Boy, oh boy, did we miss these crowds last season. They have been into it today, a loud gasp after the 1-2 wasn't given to Maryland. The 2-2 is hit back up the middle and into center field for a base hit. Ben Kaler with his second knock of the day and Penn State has a runner aboard here in the ninth. Anthony Steele will step up to the plate next. There's been a good Penn State contingent as well, wearing blue, especially to the first base side. And you get another look at Ben Kaler just taking it right back up the box to get Penn State a runner aboard here in the ninth with one out. Anthony Steele, the DH, is one for three as well. That big open stance takes a healthy cut at the first pitch and comes up empty. It was a great at bat from Kaler to lay off two really tough pitches and to extend the inning by getting on as well. Luke Schliger going to go have a quick chat with Sean Hine. And came around to, score, to score the tying run. 0-1 offering. Below the knees, a ball and a strike. You know, Hine would love a ground ball here. Maryland's already turned a double play to end an inning. That came back in the sixth. That frame where Penn State scored two of their three runs. 1-1 one, one catch is enough of the zone to make it one and two. Gorgeous day for baseball, fantastic game of baseball. What a way for Maryland to start off their conference late on a Saturday. They're picking up a win against Penn State in the conference opener yesterday. A series to open up the Big Ten play. That has not disappointed. Hind ahead of Steele, one and two. Brings it home. Swung on and missed. Big strikeout for the second out of the day. Or the second out of the inning, rather, for Sean Hine. Nasty pitch, just absolutely disappeared to the back foot of Kaler. We'll take a look at it again. 
Just the late dip has him absolutely handcuffed. Schlager loves it. So here's Derek Cease, one for 14 on the season. Has scored three runs, perhaps none more important than the one he scored an inning ago. First pitch from Hine, downstairs. Trouble awaits on deck in the top of the Penn State order. Cole Bartles biding his time, waiting in the wings. And after him, Piacentino and Wood. 1-0, runners on the move. It's a ball outside, throw goes down to second base, tag applied in time! Luke Schlinger with a dart from behind the dish. And we head Righty versus righty to start things off. Smarslack is 0 for 3 on the day. First pitch runs downstairs. Maryland does have options if Smarslack gets on, if Rob Vaughn wants a different option to run the bases. Long way from that, though. 1 0. Drops in for a strike. 1 and 1. The tension has been high all day in College Park, and it boiled over for Rob Cooper in between the half innings. 1-1 one, one is bounced to the third base side. Kaler is there and throws on to first base in time. One gone. Nice play from Kaler to redeem himself. A deep breath from Lundsman. First pitch to the lefty hitting Martin. Runs upstairs and outside, 1-0. and Kevin Keister on deck. Big swing and a miss, one and one. And then of course after Keister, the lineup turns over. Martin does not have an extra base hit in his very young Maryland career. It's at bat number 16 for him as a Turk. And he fouls one back to the screen, one and two. Kevin Keister is on deck with a pair of strikeouts to bookend a leadoff double in the fifth. One, two to Martin. Popped up behind home plate, going back as Wood towards the screen, and he's gonna run out of room. He slid hard into the padding back behind home plate. Looks to be okay, thankfully. And it's not easy when you run out of real estate that quickly. And you gotta love the effort that he gives as well, just putting his body on the line, no regard. And second life for Zach Martin, perhaps. The second baseman ceases on the artificial outfield grass on the right side. One, two. Staying alive is Martin. There's Harry in the foreground of your picture, shaded over towards the second base back. A short stop with another step to his left. One, two to Martin. Just missed it. Outside, two and two. As this game has been tied up, these Terps hitters have really gotten more selective and they've been doing really well getting into deep counts. Now it's just if they could do anything with these deep counts. 2-2 two, two to the freshman Martin. Swung on and missed. Two gone here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Start a two out rally. One runs upstairs. Maryland just one for eight with two outs so far today. One hit with two gone. Keister ahead now in the count, 2-0. Oh. That hit came in the eighth inning. That dribbler to the third base side off the bat of Maxwell Costas. 2-0. Missed it outside, 3-0. With Luke Schligger awaiting on deck, Keister ahead in the count. And a chance for a base runner here in the ninth. Lundsman finds the zone right back, 3-1. Lundsman working very quickly. Brings home the 3-1 offering to Keister. Ball four. And the winning run at first base now for the catcher, Luke Schliger. It's to end it right here. It's a big at bat for Schliger right here, righty lefty. Schliger's reached base three out of the four plate appearances today. A double, a walk, pair of runs scored. First pitch to him here. 
downstairs. Keister leads off of first. Second baseman sees on the edge of the artificial outfield grass. 1-0 upstairs, two balls and no strikes. Chris Aline on deck, Nick LaRusso after him. Maryland is in the top of the order, going through their lineup card for time number five. And Schliger can expect a pitch to drive here. 2-0 in the dirt, 3-0. And Lundsman one mistake away from putting the winning run in scoring position for one of Maryland's captains, Chris Ali. See if the green light's on here for Schliger. Taking all the way, taking a strike. And it's 3-1. Still can afford to be selective with what he swings at here, Luke Schliger. In the bottom of the ninth inning with the winning run on. 3-1. Fouled away and the count's full. That'll give Keister a running start from first. On the next pitch. And that could be the difference if, if Schliger makes some contact and splits the gap. A running start can really get Keister home with his speed. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, runner at first, tie game, bottom of the ninth. Payoff pitch. We'll do it all over again. Fouled away to the third base side. As Schliger was a bit tardy but stayed alive. The good emergency swing. Can't ask for anything more than this ball game that we've gotten so far today and what will be the final piece of the puzzle for either of these teams. Another 3-2. Up high and outside, ball four. Excellent at bat from Luke Schliger. And the winning run, Kevin Keister, is in scoring position. Head coach get thrown out of the game and saw the Maryland head coach get fired up. And it all winds up with a pinch hitter here in the top half of the 10th inning, CJ Pitaro, who lines one back up the middle and into center field for a base hit. The Vanderbilt transfer gets Penn State's top half of the 10th going off of the right foot. And that will flip the lineup card around for Cole Bartles. And this is exactly where the momentum turned at the last play is the second baseman, and I believe it was the, I'm looking at my card, that was the fifth when the double play at second was made. It flipped the lineup card right around, and now Penn State has another chance to get the momentum to get the score on their side with the momentum back on their side. Bartle shows bunts early on. And it misses low and outside. There's a new pitcher on the hill we should mention. Nick Robinson is on the bump. Sean Hines' day is done. And it's up to number 31 in the red jersey with his ERA sitting right at three to hold this game right where it is at three runs apiece. Last time out against George Mason through two innings of scoreless baseball. One hit, no walks, one strikeout. Once again, pulling back on the bunt and once again taking a ball is Cole Bartles, 2-0. Oh. The graduate student from Hewlett, New York is Nick Robinson trying to navigate through this 10th inning. Swinging away and hitting one back up the middle and again past Kevin Keister into center field. Back-to-back -back base hits for Penn State and they are set up here in the 10th. Robinson, the transfer from the University of Rhode Island with a lot of work to do here with the heart of the Penn State order coming to the plate. Yeah, nice work just to get the bat head out over the plate, chasing that outside pitch away. They've tested Keister, but even though, well, despite the diving attempts, Keister's not going to be getting two either of those if they've both been punched right back up the middle. Robinson with a career 5.72 ERA at URI. Coming to Maryland and 
being placed in a high impact situation here with Johnny Piacentino at the plate. The two run homer in the sixth inning, one of the bigger swings of this ball game. First pitch runs upstairs. The third baseman LaRusso was crashing, expecting a potential bunt with Matt Wood awaiting on deck. It's an interesting decision for the Penn State coaches to make. It's not Rob Cooper anymore after he was ejected from the game earlier. Josh Newman, Sean Moore, Dallas Burke, the rest of the Penn State coaching staff. one -oh offering. In there, ball and a strike. It's Pitaro at second. It's Bartles at first. It is a massive at-bat in the top half of the 10th inning. Penn State has double-digit hits. They're out hitting Maryland right now 10 to seven. But the three runs apiece is what matters most. 1-1. One, one. one and two. Piacentino came into this game three for his last 15. He's one for four today. And a chance for a massive hit to give Penn State the lead for the first time today. Pitaro dancing off of second. One, two, well outside. Maryland will have three, four, five due up in the bottom half of the 10th inning. LaRusso, Shaw, Costas with Schreffler after them. Will they have the chance to win it or will they be chasing at least one? Two, two. Swung on and missed. Might have foul tipped it into the glove of Schliger. No matter though, and there's one away here in the 10th. A big cut, but bigger heat coming from Nick Robinson. Just gassed it by Piacentino, and after the home run to get Penn State back into this, he hasn't been as lucky at the play. It's a big strikeout. That's a big call from Robinson to throw the heat past him. And now another marquee at bat with Matt Wood against Robinson. Last time up an RBI single in the eighth inning to tie it up. First pitch to the lefty here. Inside corner, strike one. Worth noting that on that at bat against Ramsey to tie the game up, and he's that the reason we are here. He went after the first pitch and sent that into the left center field, the right center field gap. That wasn't a pitch to swing out and drive there as a pitcher's pitch from Robinson. See what he comes back with on the 0 1. Another fastball, another good spot, nothing in two. On deck is Brendan Franks, who was brought in to pinch run for Spiegel. As a matter of fact, now that's Kelly who's come on in to the game, who's awaiting on deck. Taven Kelly, should the inning get that far, on deck. But first, Matt Wood, behind nothing and two. Robinson delivers. Popped up in the air, shallow left field will be playable for Shaw, who's calling for it. Infield fly rule in effect, and there's two away. And for those who might have been scratching their heads, quick clarification, the rule for infield fly rule should really be called infielder fly rule. Mm -hmm. It's whether or not it's reasonably caught by an infielder, not whether or not the ball happens to be in the infield. Some baseball fans could think back to a Braves-Cardinals wild card game several years ago at this point, in which that was of quite a bit of controversy. Luke Schliger and Nick Robinson will have a quick conversation here about how to approach Taven Kelly, the junior from Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania, who is two righty versus righty here. Quick peek back at second and the first pitch to Kelly, drops in for strike one. Jay Harry 
waiting in the wings. Will he get a chance to hit here in the 10th? Another big deep breath from Robinson. A one offering. Lace into left center field. That is going to get down for a base hit. Roll into the gap and roll all the way towards the wall. One run scores. Here comes Bartles. The throw is going to be cut off. It's a two RBI double for Kelly. And Penn State takes the lead five to three. Talk about playing the hero from Taven Kelly. Nice off speed pitch and he saw it coming all the way. And Robinson left it out on the outside corner but didn't catch it enough, and he sent it all the way to the wall. Absolutely massive stuff from Taven Kelly to sink a dagger into the hearts of the Terps fans. And now a mountain to climb for Maryland in the bottom half of the inning. And what a rally for Penn State. Five unanswered after Ryan Ramsey had a three nothing lead and was cruising. Here's Harry, fouls the first pitch away up and over the screen, nothing in one. Maryland, as I mentioned, will have their big boppers up when they step up to bat in the bottom half of the 10th inning, three, four, five. And very many Maryland fans will likely be thinking back to that controversial call in the bottom of the ninth inning. Batters interference against Chris Aline when he was hit by a baseball but didn't move out of the way of it. That one's hammered down the right field line. Fair ball, it's gonna roll towards the corner. It bounces off of the side of the wall, coming home and scoring is Kelly. Into second base goes Harry. Harry and Kelly switching places and a bonus run for Penn State here in the top half of the 10th. Really piling it on as Robinson. Don't think you could fault him too much because that's a pitch inside and you have to get your hands around it to send it that far down the first baseline. We'll take a look at it again. Uh, maybe a little bit too much of the plate actually. And get high Penn State. They've got three here in the top half of the 10th against Nick Robinson. Coming with two outs as well as it's Billy Gerlot next up against Robinson. First pitch is fouled away down the right field line and Travis Lundsman just trying to stay active down the right field line, continuing to throw as it's been quite a bit of real time between the last time he towed the rubber, between the rally and the conversation with Rob Vaughn that ended the ninth inning on the batter's interference call from Ali. Oh, 01. Oh, 02. Really sucked the air out of the Terps fans as well. It's just a noticeable deflation amongst the crowd. With the small exception for the contingent down the first base side, clad in Penn State blue, who have been fired up by the Penn State dugout. Rightfully so, my dad. 0 2, runners on the move. It's upstairs, the throw down to third base in plenty of time. And Harry is cut down at third. To the bottom of the 10th inning we go. From Travis Lundsman to Maryland's third baseman. Big swing and a miss, the ball and a strike now. Matt Shaw, Maxwell Costas also do up. Troy Schreffler, Bobby Zmarslak after them. One and two as it's fouled right back to the screen. Six unanswered runs for Penn State in the sixth, eighth, and now 10th inning, two, one, and three respectively. To give the Nittany Lions the advantage. That one's poked out towards the right side. Going to be a tough play for the new second baseman, Kaler, who flips it with his glove, not in time. Lundsman and Bartles unhappy with the decision. Well, welcome back to second base, Ben Kaler. <laughs> Ball always seems to find the new defensive position change. Here's Matt Shaw now. First pitch runs downstairs. Heck of a job by our 
camera people in control room, by the way, to give us a fantastic look at that. They've been doing a great job all day. Got the look at that Aline play in the bottom of the ninth inning as well. Plenty of controversy around this ball game. Plenty of intrigue around this ball game. As Shaw lines one foul down the right field line, it's one and one. And perhaps one more wrinkle in this ball game. I gave you a stat earlier that in the last ten games, the, the four through seven, the four through seven guys have won in the games that the Terps have won. The eight of the ten games that they've won that the four through seven have provided at least four hits and the two games that they lost, that was not the case. Only two hits so far from that four through seven. Well, this one with LaRusso makes it three. So who knows, they're they could be coming for that claim. 2-1 offering here to Shaw. Upstairs, three balls and a strike. Two hits for Nick LaRusso. He's the only one with multiple hits for Maryland today. One each for Schliger, Ali, and Costa, Schreffler, Martin, and Keister. Shaw's ahead in the count now, three and one. Lundsman brings it home at the knees, and the count's full. Have to imagine that LaRusso's staying put. No stolen bases on the season. His run only matters in the context of two more. Payoff pitch from Lundsman. Staying alive is Shaw, and just barely. Wind blowing out to left field. As the tying run on deck at the moment in the form of Maxwell Costas. Lundsman would love a ground ball, but Maryland needs multiple runs, and Penn State happy to, try out, to trade and out for 90 feet. 3-2. Fouled away again. Great battle developing here between Lundsman and Shaw. Only two extra base hits today. Both doubles, one from Schliger, one for Keister. Maryland would love to add some extra base hits here in the 10th inning to get back into it. Another 3-2. Hammered up and out of play. And the battle will continue. Question now of who will blink first, Travis Lundsman or Matt Shaw? Battle between two guys who certainly have their futures perhaps at the next level. Trying to get it done in the Big Ten here. Another 3-2. Hit to the left side and a diving play by Pitaro. Throw out to first base, not gonna be in time. Here's Costas. Up, lefty up in the Penn State pen. First pitch to Maxwell Costas. Another fantastic stop by Wood. We've been saying that all weekend. Absolute masterclass defensively for the Penn State standout. Sliding from left to right. Keeping the double play intact as well. one 0 to Costas. 2-0. Troy Schreffler on deck. The first extra inning contest for Maryland this season. And it has been a dandy. And it is still an uphill climb for Maryland. Two zero to Maxwell Costas. Three balls and no strikes. It's not even the first extra inning contest for Penn State this week. Earlier on in the midweek, they took down St. Bonaventure in 10 innings by the score of three to two. That was this past Wednesday. See if the green light's on here for Costas. 3-0. Taken all the way, taken a strike, and it's three and one. At first base is Shaw, at second base is LaRusso, and Maryland not going away without a fight here in the 10th. Costas looking for one he can drive here. 3-1. Oh, 
Oh, fouled it right back to the screen. Didn't miss it by much, but the count's full. Lonsman would love it out any way he can get it, even conceding another 90 feet to LaRusso and Shaw. Big pitch here in the 10th inning, as they all are at this stage of the game. 3-2. Upstairs. And the bases are full of Terps with nobody out here in the bottom half of the 10th inning, and the winning run steps up to the plate in the form of Troy Schreffler. LaRusso, Shaw, and Orr on the base pass. First pitch to Schreffler. Big swing and a miss and an audible ooh from the Bob Turtlesmith Stadium crowd. Wind is picked up and out towards left field, which could be relevant for the righty hitting Schreffler. A one. Bounced out towards the shortstop, that's Harry. Only play is gonna be at first base, it's made, a run scores, but the first out of the 10th inning is recorded. Tying run moves into scoring position. Smarslack is 0 for 4 today. There's Shaw in the foreground at third. Oh, big swing and a miss for Bobby Smarslack. Hit a long home run yesterday. A home run today would win the ball game. A one. Off of his fist to the first base side, foul territory. Bartles giving chase towards the Penn State pen. He's gonna run out of room, and just barely. Nothing in two to Zmarzlak. Zach Martin, the freshman, awaiting on deck. Chance to introduce himself as a hero. Still just his first year in College Park. Or can Bobby Zmarzlak produce first for the Terps? Maryland trying to stay undefeated at home. They're 11-0 in this building this season. 0-2, upstairs. A sizable gap on the right side of the infield with the second baseman, Kaler, shifted over towards the back. Keeping Orr honest, the runner at second. As Lundsman turns his attention back towards Marslack. Ahead in the count, one and two. Deep breath, brings it home. Just missed outside. And the count's even at two and two. That is a tough pitch to take with two strikes in this spot in this ball game. But Marslack with a watchful eye to stay in the at bat. The 2-2 offering. Swung on and missed. A massive second out for Travis Lundsman. Tying run out at second base. Zach Martin, the tall freshman. First pitch from Lundsman. Big swing and a miss. Fastball blew it straight past him. As a fellow freshman out there at Second base, representing the tying run in Jacob Orr. With Shaw at third. That one runs upstairs, ball and a strike. And we did the advertisement for the game tomorrow, but I don't know if there's any better advertisement than this 10th inning. Tomorrow is gonna be an absolute barn burner here on Big 10 Plus. 1-1. Kevin Keister on deck. Luke Schliger after him. As Lundsman comes set just below the letters. The 2-1 offering, swung on and missed, and Maryland down to their final strike. The first venture into extra innings for Maryland in 2022 and they have no room with which to work. Lundsman is set. 2-2. Two -two. 
And that hits something. And it's going to be a foul ball. Off of Martin's bat. And he stays alive in the count. And Martin not protesting. Hitter can pretty clearly tell where it hit off of, and Martin understood it hit off of his bat, so we'll do the 2-2 all over again. Big deep breath from Lundsman again. Another 2-2. Inside. And the count's full. Penn State crowd wanted it. First base is open. But you know Lundsman's going to attack here anyways. High drama in College Park. Tying run in scoring position. Bottom of the 10th inning. Maryland trying to stay unbeaten at home. Penn State trying to pick up a conference win. Payoff pitch to Martin. Swung on, hit in the air into shallow right field. It is going to be caught by Kaler. Caught by Ben Kaler and Penn State wins it. A dazzling play by Ben Kaler, and Penn State takes this wild contest six to four.